everyone, it's Lisa. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this adorable summer beachy album using the Big Banner 4 die set from the Stamps of Life. So I'm just gonna do a quick flip through. So here's the front cover, summer fun. It has some palm trees, flamingos, some sand, and a sun. And then when you flip it over, I went ahead and just kind of didn't adhere these pictures all the way. I just kind of stuck them in here because I am gonna be taking these out and giving these this album to Stephanie for my design team project. So here I have the ocean, I have the dolphin stamp and the fish stamp that I colored up. And here's my next page. I use the enjoy die and some of the shells. I use the loving life word die that's from one of the card kits it's actually from the same card kit that i use this paper and i use this paper throughout the entire album it was from the loving life collection which was a larger paper pad from the stamps of life again some more shells here's another one using the flamingo and some more shells there's another one using the dolphin and the fishes to stamp using a sunshine word die and some of the floaties the sunglass dies and some more shells. And again, the floaties here. So there's my album. It was actually five pages, but front and back, it's actually 10 pages. And these, this album will actually, it's so large that it will actually hold a four by six photo. So this is a four by six photo and it, you can see how large it is that it will actually fit that. So the die set that I used to make this album is the Big Banner 4 die set, which comes with all of these fun dies. So you have your large die that actually makes the large banner. This is what I used for the actual base pages. And then you have some layering dies. You have a larger layering die and then a smaller layering die. I used the larger lay layering die on my album to cut out the pattern paper. If you wanted to add another layer, you can always do so. And this die set also has these notches here that you can um, intertwine ribbon through here. But instead, I did not use those notches. You can see I just cut them off and just punched holes here. But you can use those if you wanted to. There's also these other dies. So let's say you didn't want to use this large die and you just wanted to use these smaller dies. You can use these dies to actually die cut the... Um, the holes for the ribbon or holes if you wanted to do like a three ring punch. So just to show you what this die set consists of, you can actually see the cardstock pages that I cut out. So here's the large die. So this would be this die and you can see the notches here. So you can put some ribbon in here to actually connect each one of your banner pages together. You also have your next size layering die which is this one and then the smaller size which is this one and again if you wanted to let's say you wanted to use the smaller banner and poke holes in the top you can just after you die cut your paper you can use this die which will actually poke the holes in that paper for you or you can use this one for ribbon it's up to you. So just to kind of see these dies layered. So if you were to use all three of these dies, this is how it would look when it's layered, just like this. And this is a pretty large die set, and I just want to give you an idea of how big this is. So the largest die is five and three quarter inches wide. And then just the actual banner part from edge to edge, it's about seven and three quarter inches. So that's the largest one. And then you have the medium size layering die, which again, you can use this die just for a banner if you wanted a little bit of a smaller banner. It's just over seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then the smallest one is a, just over six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And you can actually fit the large folded. So you know how a lot of you have been following the Stamps of Life for a while and you're familiar with the folded cards. You can actually fit a folded on the front of this die set because this is so big. 
So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna show you how I made this album. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to make this fun summer album. So to start out, I die cut some chipboard. This is just a medium weight chipboard that I purchased off Amazon. And I will put a link to this below in case you're interested. Now you don't have to use chipboard. You can just use thick cardstock if you wanted to make an album, but I like to use chipboard just because when I'm making an album, it's just, I, I like the thickness of it and it's very sturdy and it doesn't bend as easily. So what I've done is this is just gonna be a five page album. You can add as many pages to your album as you want. I took the large die which is this die, and I die cut five pieces of chipboard, and yes, this does go through my die cutting machine. I do use the Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine, and it goes through just fine. I just roll it through once and back again, and it cuts through fine. So I want you to notice, though, that I did not cut these pieces out fully. When I was die cutting, I just kind of was trying to save some chipboard, and I just kind of die cut on the edge, and because I don't need these pieces, I'm not gonna be using these pieces. I'm actually gonna cut these off and I'm gonna poke holes or punch holes in the side and do a ring type or ring bound um, album. So you can, if you wanted to use these, you can if you want, but I'm not doing that. So I die cut five. And then after you die cut your chipboard, you're gonna to need to decide on your cardstock and your pattern paper. So I'm actually using the Stamps of Life Loving Life collection. This is a collection that came out early this year. I don't recall what exact month it was. It could have been January or February, I don't remember. Nevertheless, it is one of their larger paper pads. It did come with the card kit for the month that it came out. It is the Loving Life collection. And this paper, it's large enough to use on these banners because they're smaller paper pads. The um, they're not gonna be large enough. You probably have to die cut a couple different pieces and then piece them together. So, you know, these this is, large enough to fit on the second banner. You can even use it to fit on this largest banner. So you can see that it is plenty big there. So it'll fit on the large banner, then the next size, and then it obviously will fit on the next size. I just grabbed any paper pad that I had, and I just wanted to show you the smaller paper pads, the paper in here. You can see that it's not going to fit if you wanted to use an entire sheet or cover the entire banner with the pattern paper, you would actually just have to die cut part of it and then maybe do another color and then just piece in patterns if you wanted to do that. Or you can use solid color cardstock or you can just find any pattern paper that you like. 12 by 12 sheets would obviously work and die cut those. But I'm sticking with Stamps of Life because this is a design team project that I'm doing for the Stamps of Life. So I wanted to be sure that I'm using their paper. Next, I have some blue cardstock that I die cut. And this was out of the largest die in the set. And notice that I didn't necessarily cut the entire piece here, because again, that's gonna be cut off. So I die cut 10 pieces, because this is gonna be the front and back of each one of these chipboard pieces. So you're just gonna add these, and then once you add these, you are going to just snip off those ends so that this is a straight edged. So I'll do the first one with you, and then I'll add the rest and come back. So. So I'm just gonna add some glue and I am using my art glitter glue because this is a pretty strong glue. So I'm just adding it to the back of my blue cardstock. I'm not gonna worry about adding it to those little notches up at the top because again, those are gonna be cut off. And then just add it to the chipboard and then press that down. If you wanted to use a bone folder just to make sure that that is pressed down all the way, you can do that. And then you're gonna add to the back of that. And then just press that down. And then just take your scissors and you can just snip off the tops 
and you're gonna do that for all of them. So here are all my pieces covered with the blue cardstock front and back. Next, you need to decide on the cardstock that you want to use for your pages and die cut those. Now, I die cut mine with the second largest layering die. So you have two layering dies. I did not use the smaller one. I used the larger one and I die cut my pattern paper. And what I've done is I've just grouped them together so I have front and backs. That way I know what I want to put where. So I kind of just looked like if this was open as, a, at a, as like a book style. I took a colorful print and then I took one of the solid prints and I grouped them together. So these pages will be facing, these pages will be facing, and so on and so forth. So that way I have them in order the way that I want them. Now, now I do want to mention to you since this paper pad, in case some of you might have this on hand, it is a directional which means that it only goes actually one way. So when you open the paper pad, all of the pages go vertical. So you want to be mindful of that when you're die cutting. So if you have your book and the, the book will actually have holes in it up here. So when you have your book, you will die cut. Let's say, for example, you wanted this page to be on the front. Then you would die cut it with the flat side at the top, and then you'd be able to put that piece on here. But when then you open the book, then this page, it'll be open like this, and the point will be at the top. So let's say you wanted the turtles to be facing top, then you would have to die cut your, use your die and just flip it around and put the point up at the top. And then that would be for that, that page. So hopefully that makes sense. So you can see like with, this is actually gonna be my cover, with the dots it doesn't matter, but it's gonna look like this. So with the starfish, the legs, the two, two legs will be at the bottom. So you can see how that would look. And I just wanna show you, um, like with the Loving Life paper, you can see how the point would be at the top. So just be m mindful of that when you're doing your die cutting. And what I'm gonna do right now is I am going to just work on my cover, my front cover, and I don't wanna add this page to it quite yet because there are some items that I'm gonna put on my cover that I are gonna extend beyond this paper and I will need to trim off. So if I put this page on it, it will be hard for me to do that. So if you have any scenes that you're trying to create, do it on the paper before you add it to your album. And you'll see as I go through what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna work with this page right now. So I've stamped out and colored a bunch of fish and shells, some flamingos, some whales, and I just stamped them out on some Bristol Smooth cardstock, colored them in with my real brush pens, which was I did some water coloring because I thought that would be the quickest and fastest way for me to color up these stamped images rather than using my Copic markers. So some of the sets that I used were the fish to stamp set. I also used the shells to stamp. I have the flamingo to stamp, which has these two flamingos, and I just used the smaller one. And I also did the dolphins to stamp, and I'm gonna be incorporating these on my in my album. I die cut a sun. This sun is from the Summer for Fun dies. So I die cut the top layering piece out of the sunshine cardstock and then the shadow layer out of the banana cardstock. And I'm just adhering that because I did put double sided adhesive. So I'm just gonna kind of place everything where I want it to go. I know I'm gonna want that sun to kind of be off of the page. I also did some stamping and die cutting. I did make a palm tree. This was from the Island to Visit set. So I just stamped on some green apple cardstock with green apple ink, die cut that out with the shadow die, and then die cut the um, bark of the tree with chocolate cardstock. So I am going to add that. I'm also going to add a border. This is, was cut with a border die from some ginger snap cardstock. This is the ginger snap 
um, cardstock from the Stamps of Life, and that's gonna go here at the bottom. I will be trimming this off, but I just wanna put this here for placement. And then I'm also using my Punch Alphabet, and I have some words that I die cut. And the words are Summer Fun. I think I'm just gonna place the dies on here for now instead of the actual cardstock because I do have double-sided adhesive on the back of this. And it's coming directly off of that cardstock, so that's all sticker. And I don't wanna stick it quite yet, so I'm just gonna use my dies for placement. All right, so that's about how I want it to appear. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my sun, first of all, that's gonna be the first thing. So I'm just gonna add some glue to part of it and it's going to extend off the edge. So I'm just gonna press that down. I will be cutting that off, the rest of that off of there. Right. The next thing I'm gonna do is take some ginger snap ink and I'm going to ink up the edges of my sand. Just add some dimension on here. I'm also going to just take my blending brush and just pounce some ink on the top, just some more texture. And then I'm going to take this sand stamp from the Island to Visit set, same set that this came from. I'm going to ink up my sand stamp with some chocolate ink, just to add some texture. If you don't have this stamp and you like the, you wanna do a summer album like this, you can use a um, brown pen and just put dots on here just for some texture. You can use a Copic marker or any type of brown pen that you might have. So here's a closer look. You can kind of see the dimension on there. I'm going to go ahead and add this, making sure that I cover to the point in this banner. So I'm just going to put glue all the way on the back of this and add this to my banner. So just press that down. And now we'll go ahead and add these letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these off of here just for a moment, just so that I can trim off the excess so that I know what I'm working with and how much space I actually have down here at the bottom. You can actually save these pieces in case you wanna add a sun to another page. You can use part of those pieces for another page. Okay, so here is my bottom half of the banner. So now I can get a better idea of how far I need to put this palm tree down. Now remember, as you're placing this, it's actually gonna be on top of the larger banner. So if you wanna put it off more to the left, it can hang off the edge just a bit and it won't be off of the actual album page. So you can see how it's hanging off the pattern paper, but it's not hanging off of the border if I put it about right there. All right, let me go ahead and place these letters again just so I can kind of get an idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these. I took these little coconut stamps in the Island to Visit set, just stamped them out on with some chocolate ink, cut them out with my scissors, and now I'm just putting the edges of the cardstock in the chocolate ink just to kind of get rid of some of those white edges. And I did that for three of the coconuts. So I, I stamped out three coconuts and those will be added to my palm tree. So I'm also gonna add this flamingo and I'm gonna add one of the starfish to complete this scene. So I'm just gonna add this here. Now, if you wanted to put maybe some smaller shells from the fish tank, you can do that. I just don't feel like die cutting or coloring anything else because I've already die cut and colored a whole bunch of stuff. But you can jazz up this scene any, any way you choose, but I'm just gonna keep it a little bit more simple and just add these two items. 
So there is my front cover and that can then be added directly to one of the banner pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Now I'm ready to work on the rest of the pages and all of my pages in my album are going to be for a four by six photo. So I have some photo mats that I'm gonna adhere to the pattern paper. So I die cut eight photo mats because I'm gonna have eight um, photos in my album. And these measure four, so across would be four and an eighth by six and an eighth, and then you'll be able to mat a four by six photo. Now, if you didn't wanna do a four by six, maybe you wanted to do some smaller photos, then you would just have to adjust your mats accordingly. But this album is super big. These banner pages are super big, so you can actually fit a four by six photo on these pages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my photo mat to my polka dotted paper. So remember this is the back side of my cover and the photo mat would go directly on here. Now, now I wanna make sure that I leave enough room because I'm gonna to have to poke holes here. So instead of bringing this down, further down, because I don't wanna poke holes in this yellow paper, I'm actually gonna move this a little bit more towards the top because remember this is the second page and it's actually the top of my album so i want to leave enough room here that i can actually punch holes and i'm okay if the holes are punched in the pattern paper but i don't want them punched on the actual photo map because remember the photo is going to go right on top of this so i'm going to go ahead and adhere this piece down and i'm doing this first because i want to do a little bit of a scene on here. It's not gonna be much of a scene, but it's gonna be a little bit of a scene. I'm gonna put some ocean water down there. So again, that's gonna come up a little bit further. And then I die cut my, I have an ocean die that I die cut out of some sea glass cardstock. I'm actually gonna put that directly at the bottom here. So I think that would be super cute to have a little ocean scene going on right here. So I'm gonna ink this up with some ink. I'm actually gonna be using the ocean ink from the Stamps of Life. This is the sea glass cardstock, but I'm just inking it up with the ocean ink. It's just a little bit darker color of teal, and I have it on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. So that is gonna go towards the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this up. I'm not gonna adhere that yet because I'm gonna have to cut some of this off because it's a little bit longer. If this were actually adhered to the base of this um, page, it uh, would be a very hard for me to um, cut that off. What I'm gonna do is I am going to put glue on the edges and the very bottom. I'm not gonna put glue right underneath here because when you're adding your photos, you wanna be sure that you have room here to tuck the photo behind that. And if you adhere it completely flat, you're not gonna be able to do that. So just put glue on the sides and the very bottom. And I'm actually going to bring it so that it's flush with the bottom. You don't have to, if you don't want to, you can leave it up a little bit and have some of those dots showing. And I actually need to put a little bit more glue here. And then just snip off the excess on both sides. And if you have any that extend at the bottom, you can snip that part off too. I need to actually bring this down a little bit. So here is a four by six photo, and you can see that when you tuck that under, just put it under until you have the yellow edge all around and you have your photo mat. So now another thing that you can do is you can add your pictures first, and then you can just adhere this all the way down if you prefer to do that. But since this is a design team project, this is how I choose to do it because I'm not gonna be adding photos to this album. So when I give this to Stephanie, it's not gonna have any photos, but that's how you can do it. So if you wanna add your photo first and then just adhere the border all the way, you can, but you don't have to. So I will eventually, um, when, towards the end, add some of my 
fish that I colored, but I'm gonna wait because don't forget, I need to punch holes here and I don't want the holes to be punched in my fish. So I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down. So remember, this is gonna be adhered to the back of your cover. So I'm just gonna put glue on the back of this and then pop that down just like that. On. And then I'm going to move on to the next page. So when it's opened, you have another page. It's gonna open like this. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it to the side just so you can see it a little bit better. So then get the page that you want to include next. So for me, it was going to be this particular page. So for this page, I'm not going to be adding any type of border. I'm gonna go ahead and just adhere this down flat to the chipboard. So I'm gonna start with my pattern paper, and then I will add my photo mat. And remember, we're gonna have holes here, so this is gonna come down a little bit further. I am gonna put this one here, just so that I can kind of make sure that I have it centered, even with this one. And then I'm going to turn that, turn that page, and then this is the top. So I'm going to be using this fish paper. I'm going to go ahead and add this fish paper flat to the chipboard. And then I'm going to add my photo mat. And remember, I'm going to add this close to the top because the holes will be punched at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in another piece of chipboard. This one is going to go right next to it. Okay, so get your paper for that part. So I'm gonna be using the purple starfish paper and I'm also going to be bringing in another piece of the sand, very similar to how I did this piece. So ginger snap cardstock border die and then the sand stamp and then just ink it up. So before I add the purple pattern paper, I wanna go ahead and add my photo mat and then I'll add the sand and I'm gonna to have to trim off the excess sand so that's why I'm not adding that to the actual chipboard page yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my photo mat. This is gonna come down pretty far towards the bottom here because remember we're gonna poke holes in the top. And once that's added, you're going to then add your sand. Remember, you're only gonna add glue to the sides and to a thin strip along the bottom, but actually, this is actually going this way. So you're gonna to have to maybe, I think the best thing here would be to kind of just take your sand, position it so the tip of it is all the way at the bottom of this banner, okay? Because that's how far down it's gonna go. And then if you just, put some glue on the sides. So that side, we're gonna put it on this side. And then you can use a pencil to help guide you if you want, but I don't need to. So I'm just gonna add some glue along the bottom here. So you can see I have glue here and below my photo mat. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add this. So press that down and then we'll flip that over and we'll just trim off the excess cardstock. So now when you add your picture, you can slide that in just like that. And there's your picture, isn't that adorable? I love that. And now we'll go ahead and add glue and add this to the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over because the top on the next page will be pointed at the top. I have these two pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by adding my photo mat. And remember this is gonna to go towards the top, towards the pointed top. So we'll add that. And then I did another ocean and did some ink inked up the edges there. So I'm gonna add that towards the bottom. And again, remember, it's only gonna be on the side. So again, if it's easier for you just to put it here along the sides, 
you can do that. And then just add glue there to the bottom. As long as the glue is not on the yellow, you're fine. Okay, so I'll push that down and then turn this over and just cut off the excess cardstock. And then you can just tuck a photo right inside there, just like that. So then this piece is gonna be added to the back of this piece that we previously did. We'll add some glue and add that to the chipboard piece. And get our next piece of chipboard and get your next paper that you want. All right, so this one we're gonna go ahead and do green. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this flat. And then we will add the photo mat. Again, remember, make sure it's as close down to the pointed tip as you can get it. So now those are, that's those two pieces. I'm gonna close that. And we'll go ahead and put that one up and we're gonna work on the back side. So I have this polka dot piece, which I'm gonna adhere flat. And then I'm gonna add my photo mat, making sure that I add it as close to the top as I can. And then I'm gonna take out my last piece of chipboard. I'm gonna use gray for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this flat. I'm not gonna add any sand or water to it. And we'll add a photo mat to this. And then flip that over to the back side and add your final piece. And my final piece is the same pattern paper that I used for the front cover. Okay, so I have all of my pages. Now I'm going to punch the holes. And then after I punch the holes, I am going to decorate. So when you punch your holes, just make sure all your pages are lined up, just like this. I'm gonna use a crocodile, and I'm gonna use the side that is the 3 16 side. I'm just gonna take a pencil and just kind of position where I think I want my holes. I know I don't wanna go over top of my sun. If you didn't have a sun here, or if you don't care, you can just punch the holes in the corner, but I'm gonna punch my holes more towards the middle because I don't want to go into this sun. So I'm gonna start one of my holes. I think we're gonna start it about here. And then I'm just gonna measure and see how far from the edge I have that. So that's about one and a half inches from the edge of my sun. So I'm gonna come over here and measure from the edge to about one and a half inches, which is right about here. And that's where my holes are gonna go. So I'm going to take my crocodile and position it just, just over top of that hole that I made. And I'm going to press. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this hole and press. So there are my two holes at the top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the next page and I am simply going to line my two pages up, put my pencil inside of that hole and just draw a circle or just color it in. And then I am going to punch those holes. Okay. So now I have those two pages with the holes. So I'm gonna always go off of my first page. So now I'm gonna take my next page and do the same thing. So just line them up, take the pencil, just color it in with the pencil. The nice thing about the crocodile is you can actually see where that pencil is because of this little hole here in the top. And I don't believe that a regular hole punch is going to work because the chipboard is so thick. So that's why you're gonna need to have a crocodile. 
So again, go to the next page and just repeat the process. So, all right, so then, now that we have our, all our holes punched, now we can go in and we can decorate and add the embellishments. So now I'm gonna flip over my cover. I have these two pages that are gonna be side by side. I know I have water here, so I know I'm gonna be adding some fish. Just need to decide which fish I wanna add. I think we're gonna go with one of the dolphins. And when I add this, I'm not gonna put glue here at the top. Now, if you already had your picture in here, and you're okay with just putting glue on your picture, but I'm not adding pictures to this. So in case Stephanie wants to use this for herself, she will be able to just tuck a picture in there, but I'm not gonna add glue to that so that a picture can be um, inserted into there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add glue to the dolphin that's going, the part of the dolphin that's going to touch the ocean die cut. So I'm going to just add some glue here to the bottom of this dolphin along the tail and add that. So for the next page, I have this enjoy die and I wanna make sure that I glue it so that only the ends are glued down so a photo can be stuck underneath. So what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm just gonna put some glue on the back of the E and part of the N, and then part of that Y. Make sure I don't get it over the hole. And that way you can still stick something underneath. Let me look that up. And then I'm gonna put the little starfish here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna glue part of it down. And I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra shell to this page. And we'll move on. I already had some die cuts because I was planning ahead. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down. I have a purple shell. And I'm gonna put that there in the sand. And I'm gonna put this flamingo here, only gluing part of it down, probably right past, not past that neck. So on this page, I'm gonna add the loving life. This was actually one of the word dies included in this card kit when they, um, when the Loving Life card kit came out that matched this paper. So this is gonna go up towards the top and I am going to put glue on part on the L and part of the O and then all the way up at the very tippy top of these letters. And that way you can still stick a photo right underneath that. And I'm gonna add a shell I just put glue, made it kind of like an L shape, and I'm gonna add that shell here to the bottom. And that leaves some room there to stick a photo under. And I'm gonna add this little starfish. And I decided to add an extra shell to this page, so I'm just going to add some glue and then add this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these die cuts. I'm gonna add this dolphin here at the top, like he's jumping out of the water because the water's there at the bottom. So I'm gonna put glue on the top half of him, which I think I, let me go ahead and do this over. So let me add some glue here to the top. I need to keep his mouth, no glue underneath the mouth of the dolphin. No glue underneath this fin. Everything else can be adhered. So I think I'm gonna add the fish so that it's on the water. Like you could tuck it in if you want to, once you have your picture in here, but I don't have a picture in here, so I'm actually gonna put it so that it's on the water. That way I have more to adhere down. So no glue here, everything else gets glue. So no glue on the face, everything past the face will have glue on it. We'll go ahead and add a couple of these little fish down here. 
Okay, and then on this page, I have my seashell. I am also gonna bring in this floaty, and this was from the floaties to stamp, which this was an afterthought. I didn't initially think I was gonna use the floaties, but I decided I already had one colored. I'm gonna go ahead and use it just to change things up a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adhere this part of the floaty to the shell, because I kinda wanna layer them. And then once I have those adhered together, then I can figure out where I'm gonna put the glue. So I've got glue here and all along here, and then maybe part of that tail. I die cut this sunshine die out of the poppy cardstock, and I'm not gonna put it this way because it's gonna be hard to glue onto there since I don't have a picture down yet. So I'm actually gonna put it on the side and that way I'll be able to glue all of this top part down. So I used the sunglasses to stamp dies to die cut the frames and the shadow layer and then the stamps from the sunglasses to stamp I did some embossing and with the words summer vibes and that is going to go right here towards the top so I'm going to put glue along the side the top and then the other side. And then you can still stick a photo under here just like that. So down here I'm gonna add um, some shells and then on this side I'm gonna add a shell and another floaty. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this shell to the purple. I'm also going to put it put the rest of this sun in so I'm going to put some glue on the side but not all the way on those little rays that are going to extend onto the yellow and I'm going to actually put this flush with the pattern paper and then just put those down that was from page, from the cover from page one so that was the second half of that Next, you're gonna put all your pages together, so make sure they're right in the right order that you want them in. And then you're just gonna get your album rings and line your holes up. I'm using some one inch rings. Depending on how many pages you have, you might need larger rings. So these rings I just purchased at Hobby Lobby. You can probably get them at any craft store. I'll try to find links to them on Amazon, see if I can find some on there and put those below. But just put your rings through there. I'm gonna use the smaller ones just because this is not a very thick album. So just slide it through the holes and then pinch it together. And there is your album. Next, I just cut some ribbon. I have some green, yellow, and red ribbon. And I'm just gonna tie some ribbon around these rings. I always like to add ribbon to the rings when I make these types of albums. I just think it adds some more fun to it. So. I have two sets and I'm just gonna attach them to both rings. And then the last thing, if you wanted to add pictures at the end, you can just take your pictures and stick them right in. As long as you left space, they should fit in no problem. So you can see what the album will look like with pictures in it. I went ahead and put some pictures in it. I didn't glue them in because I will be taking this out. This will be going to Stephanie, so hopefully she'll be able to use this for um, maybe her grandkids. But isn't it adorable? So you can fit your four by six photos in this album. And I just think it turned out super cute. So I just, took some pictures of my kiddos and plugged them in there. So that is how you make an album using your banner dies. And this is the big banner for dies from the Stamps of Life. And you can do any theme. I did beach theme. And I will link these products down in the description box below in case you're interested in any of the products that I've used. And if you like this video, please give me a like and be sure to subscribe for more inspiration. Have a great day.